convenience. It wasn't, uh, wasn't intended for this presentation. Um, yeah, where was I? I was talking about dinner, right? I'm going to talk to you uh, about query flow graphs before, uh, before we all go out to eat. But let me first introduce myself. My name is Dirk Guit. I'm a master's student of computer science at Delft University of Technology. And I'm doing my thesis work right now. And uh, I do this uh, <laughs> at Sanema, especially on uh, Start Pagina Search. So I'm a part of the big data team, but I'm working on Start Pagina Search. And ah, there we go. I'm doing it specifically on query suggestions uh, using query logs. So uh, Start Pagina has a search engine, and it has uh, content. And I want to use uh, historic data to suggest queries to people if they can't find what they want themselves. And before I'm going to explain how I'm going to do this, I have to explain how Start Pagina works. So this is content of Start Pagina. It's mostly links. And Start Pagina has this expert tagging team. And this tag team assigns links to the content. And when people search in the search box, they're actually looking for these tags. And once the tag matches, then it shows this particular content. There is, however, a problem with this because there's a term mismatch between what the taggers uh, use as tags and what people use as queries. So for example, uh, you have Hotel Budapest and Hotel Budapest in the English notation, which is both used in the start pagina. And the one has results and the other one doesn't. Well, this is not, necessar this is, this is not necessarily because we do have results for these people. Another example is uh, Weerbericht. If you put a space in, in, then people do this, then you don't get results. But if you use the normal uh, or the the notation over there, then it does show results. So this is something we want to solve. And I'm going to do, well, my research is about uh, doing this through uh, query flow graphs. And a query flow graph is a graph model of, uh, of yeah, how the users flow from their initial query to their final result. And I try to capture this in this graph. And what I'm going to explain today is the base version of uh, the initial version of this, uh, of this graph model. The input for the graph is the query logs. There's a lot of queries uh, around, uh, well, it's in the order of tens of millions per month. And this could be a query log. So you have a user, you have a date and a time, and you have a query that that user entered at this particular time. And uh, we capture all these logs, and we try to split them into uh, search sessions. So if they're looking for a specific thing, then that's a, that's a session. And we construct a graph from it. The individual queries are the nodes, and there's an edge in between the nodes if one query succeeded another. So somebody is buying tulips, or searching for buying tulips, and then he looks for a tulip face. So there's an edge in between those queries. Now, if we have another user coming in, and uh, that one also queries buying tulips, but after that query, he searches for uh, buying roses, then we modify the graph, we add the node for buying roses, and we have an edge in between uh, buying tulips and buying roses. Now, we do this for all the queries that are, uh, that are out there in the logs. And that's a really big graph. I'm not going to show you that one, because it would be a blur. But this would be a simple <laughs> representation of this graph. So we have, again, the queries and edges in between. Now, this in itself doesn't say anything about the relation between the nodes in this graph. Because, well, there's an edge in between, but you don't know what it means. So for each occurrence of this transition between two queries, we count how many times this occurred in the query logs. So now, all of a sudden, we see that, for example, uh, if, if someone queries D, then there's a lot of people, well, there's more people querying E after that than querying G. So uh, we keep counting this. And now we have a query flow graph, a full query flow graph, and we're going to do suggestions. So say we have a new user coming in, and he queries A. We're now going to try to predict what user A is actually looking for, because A maybe doesn't have any good uh, results. So we're going to do something that's called a random walk. Maybe you know it. And part of a random walk is that you do random steps. And you do this in the direction of the arrows in this case. Uh, so the first uh, random step that we do is to F. F uh, is being queried more often after A than D and B. So it has more chance of being selected. But now we're walking to F and we cannot walk any further. So we restart. we restart this walk because the walk is finished. And now we do a step to D. So again, uh, D has a slightly less probability of being selected. But uh, from D on, we, we are going out to, uh, we can do another step. So we can go to F, E, and G. But G doesn't have a high probability of being selected. So in this case, the random step is going to E. And from E, we cannot go any further. So we would 
restart this. And we would do this over and over again on a fairly large graph. And in the end, we uh, count how many times we walked across some nodes. So uh, in this case, D and E would be added one to their counters. What we end up with is then uh, basically a probability distribution of when people start to search for A, how, uh, how likely it is that people end up in some other node. And we use this probability, if you would count all these and normalize it, you would have a chance that people uh, come across some other query. So you do this, and now based on this, you can make suggestions for F, D, and E. So that would be then the suggestion. And this is just the base type. Uh, this is basically how the query suggestion works. Now what you're actually modeling here is how users are using your product, in this case, start pagina search. And since this talk had to be all inspirational and stuff, and this, I can go on for hours of this, uh, I want to tell you what you can do with it. So um, every site or any product that, that has users and is logging users, you can build a graph just like this to predict what these users are doing. Take, for example, Kieskeurig. People are using products, going to other pages, going to new products. If you would model this in a graph, you can make a prediction about where this user might end up. And uh, maybe you can think for yourself over dinner if this is applicable to your product. And if it is, maybe you can uh, come visit me uh, and uh, talk about it. And this slide was just for cheating so I could uh, finish my story. So. <laughs>